What's happening students? It's your boy Mr. Stevenson and today's video is about the set work Piano Sonata number no. 8 in C minor Pathetique first movement by Ludwig van Beethoven. Um, we'll just call it Piano Sonata from here on in because that is a long man's title. Uh, so a bit of background information. Uh, Beethoven uh, sits in both the classical and romantic eras. Um, he was one of the ones that led the transition uh, from classical to romantic music in the early 1800s. Uh, romantic music is characterized by an, a strong emphasis on emotion, imagination, and nature. Um, they are the kind of key concepts of it, and also new ideas of rebellion and nationalism. It is a piano solo in sonata form. Uh, a sonata is a piece of music that features three sections, exposition, development, and recapitulation. The key ideas in a sonata are repetition and contrast. In the exposition section of a sonata, uh, themes uh, known as subjects, that's the main uh, melodic ideas, are played for the first time. Exposition, you are exposed to the themes for the first time. In the development section, they are played again and they are developed. Uh, they are twisted and turned in a number of different ways. Maybe it's played in different keys, uh, using different tonality, um, different intervals in the melody, uh, different harmony, things like that. And in the re recapitulation section, excuse me, they are recapitulation, recap. They are recapped. They are played again uh, in a way that is much closer to the original time. Uh, the texture in this piece is always either monophonic, which is a single line of, of melody, or homophonic, which is a line of melody with accompaniment, uh, which is generally played by the left hand of the piano. The accompaniment that is. Uh, there are two subjects in this. So two. Uh, main melodic ideas. They have a bridge passage between the two of them each time, the function of which is to kind of change the key. So that's a section where we make the transition from one key to the next. I'm going to go over the structure of the composition and the main ideas that are put forth in each section. The first section is the introduction. This is bars one to ten. Uh, there is an intense short melodic statement, so short bit of melody, uh, which is played and then repeated a fourth higher. So it is repeated but with every note moved four degrees up the scale. This section ends with an interrupted cadence. Uh, a cadence is a pair of chords that are used to end a piece or a section of a piece. An interrupted cadence is a cadence that does not end on the home chord of the piece. Uh, this one ends with the fifth to sixth chords of the piece, which is in this instance G minor to A minor. Uh, so they are the fifth and sixth chords of the key, which, by the way, at this point in time is C minor. We are then at the exposition section, which is bars 11 to 132. Uh, the first subject is played for the first time in the home key of C minor. Uh, there's lots of dynamic contrast in this section. You should be able to hear that. That should be quite clear and obvious. Uh, and between bar 18 and 19, there is a perfect cadence. A perfect cadence is chord 5 to chord 1. So in this instance, G minor to C minor. 
After that, the theme is then repeated. At bar 35, there is a transition section, a short transition, uh, which features a lot of chromatic movement. Um, chromatic movement is moving up one semitone at a time. Uh, so for instance, going from C to C sharp to D would be chromatic movement because they are notes or they're direct neighbours and are semitones apart. After the transition, uh, we go to the second subject, which is in E flat minor. Uh, and this is quite unexpected. We would normally expect E flat major in, in this section uh, because it is the relative major of the home key of C minor. A relative major is a key that uses the exact same notes as a minor key. So a, a more simple one that you might be aware of is A minor is the relative minor of C major uh, because they both use only the white keys on a piano. Uh, so relative majors and minors are keys that use the same notes but they have a different starting note. Um, anyway, so the second subject is in E flat minor and it is much more kind of lyrical sounding. It uses a lot of grace notes, that's very quick passing notes, uh, also known as ornaments, and some crossed hands as well, so that's when the piano player has to play a part where they go left over right. Uh, second subject uses an Alberti bass, uh, which is a bass line made up of a broken chord, uh, where we play the first, third and fifth of a chord up and down. Um, named after an otherwise forgotten composer called Domenico Alberti, who pioneered the technique and didn't really do much else. Uh, we now are up to the development section, uh, which is bars 133 to 194. The subjects are developed and pulled apart and changed you know, in a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, the musical ideas in this section are based on fragments of the melody, from uh, the first repeats of the subject, the first time we heard them. Uh, there is a reprise of the four bars of introduction, four bars from the introduction, uh, with an enharmonic change. Uh, it changes from E flat to D sharp, which is the same note. An E flat is the same thing as a D sharp. Uh, the reason we do enharmonic changes is that sometimes it is easier to write with sharps than it is to write with flats. Uh, so it's written uh, differently, but the way it's played is the same. Uh, and the reason uh, it is written as D flat, uh, D sharp rather, rather than E flat, is because it then goes to E minor, uh, which obviously has an E natural in it rather than an E flat. So that's why it is briefly in D sharp rather than E flat. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, in that short E minor section, uh, we hear some ideas from the introduction and the first subject. And we are then uh, from bars 195 to 294, we are in the recapitulation section. Uh, the first subject is played again in the home key. And the second subject is played in the subdominant key. A subdominant is the key which is that of the fourth uh, degree of the scale. Uh, so the fourth degree, or the fourth chord rather, in C minor is F minor. So the subdominant of C minor is F minor. The second subject is played in that key here. There is then a short codetta. Uh, which is like a coda. A coda is a section that is used to finish a piece of music. Uh, a codetta is literally a little coda. And that's bars 295 to 310. Uh, use some ideas from the introduction and that rocket theme is heard again. Other interesting points about this. Uh, well, one other interesting point that I've neglected to mention is it uses some sfozandos. The symbol for a sfozando should be coming up on the screen now. Uh, they are written on the score. When you see a sposando on a score, it means you play that note or chord with greater force. So you literally hit it a little bit harder. 
Uh, so that's it. Have a listen to the piece. Try and spot all the things that I've mentioned in this video. Uh, write yourself some exam questions based on the stuff we spoke about. Use some of that stuff to revise. Uh, as usual, watch over the video again. If you uh, if you weren't sure about anything, and as usual, contact me if you have any questions about this or indeed any of the other set works. Alright, and that's it. Happy revising!